WDEV News presents the regular monthly meeting of the Fentress County Commission. The Fentress County Commission meets the third Monday of each month, and you can see it live on Channel 12 Cable TV. It's a presentation of the Union Bank of Jamestown and Clark Range, your reliable banking partner since 1904. For more than a century, Union Bank has been serving the people of Fentress County. Now, as we begin a new chapter in our history of service, we want to take this opportunity to reassure you that while our building may be new, we're still the same friendly people you have known for years. Union Bank, the same people, the same goals, and the same commitment to you. Union Bank, your locally owned hometown bank for more than a century, growing to meet your needs. Equal Housing Lender Member FDIC. This Fentress County Board of Commission is called to order. Uh, please rise for the uh, <laughs> pledge of the flag by Lester Goody and our opening prayer by Jeff Green. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Let's pray. Father God in heaven, we come to you tonight, Father, thanking you for the opportunity to serve our, our county, to serve our state and our country, Father. I pray that the decisions that we make here tonight will be made in the best interest of the county, and I pray that all that we do would bring glory to you. I ask these things in Christ's name. Amen. 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 We'll have a roll call by Marilyn Stevens, our county court clerk. Here. 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 We do have a quorum. Uh, the next thing on the amend, uh, uh, agenda is the approval of minutes from a regular commission meeting on February 19, 2018. Does everybody have a chance to look over the uh, minutes? Any additions or subtractions? I'll entertain a motion to accept the minutes. So moved. I have a motion to have a second. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Four. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next on the agenda is approval of notary applications. We have April Dawn Price, Gregory Lawrence Garrett, Amanda A. Hicks, Lisa Ann Garrett, Monica M. Brown, Millie Ray Beatty, and Carla Smith. Make a motion to approve. Motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Jim. Four. Justin. Four. Benny. Four. 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 Lester. Four. Jeff. Four. Larry. Four. Wade. Four. Jackie. Four. Kim. Four. Four. <laughs> Ten, four, nine against. Motion passes. Uh, next thing on our agenda, uh, real, real proud to have uh, Ty Reagan here. Uh, he earned the prestigious rank of Eagle Scout. Uh, that's uh, one of the, the rarest things that you can achieve in, in America today. So, uh, Ty, could we get you to come up with your uh, family? And I see, is that your scout leader? Come on up. And anybody else in the scouts with with Ty, we've got a, a proclamation here, and uh, Kim Davison's going to read that. Alrighty. A proclamation of the Board of Commissioners of Fentress County in honor of Ty Reagan. Whereas Ty Reagan has earned the prestigious Eagle Scout rank on December 10th, 2017. Whereas Ty is the first Eagle Scout from Fentress County in 11 years. 
Ty recently attended the 2017 Eagle Scout Recognition Banquet in Knoxville on March 2nd, 2018. His court of honor is scheduled for Friday, March 30th, 2018. Whereas, the rank of Eagle Scout may be earned by a Boy Scout, who has been a Life Scout for at least six months, has earned a minimum of 21 merit badges, has demonstrated Scout spirit, and has demonstrated leadership within his troop, team, crew, or ship. Additionally, he must plan, develop, and lead a service project, the Eagle Project, that demonstrates both leadership and commitment to duty. Whereas Ty's Eagle Scout project was completed this past summer, he chose to build a memorial swing at Brown Cemetery in memory of one of his friends that he lost in 2015. As part of his project, he also performed grass trimming and litter pickup at the cemetery. Whereas Ty is a senior at York Institute and involved in many activities, in athletics, he participates in track and field and cross country as well as golf. He is a member of the Honor Society. He also scored a 33 on the ACT. He has been chosen as this year's Mr. YAI by the faculty of York Institute. Whereas Ty has signed with Alice Lloyd College in Pippa Passes, Kentucky and will be on their cross country team. His plans are to become an orthodontist and to return to Fentress County to establish his practice. Now, therefore, Fentress County Executive's Office and the Fentress County Board of Commission formally express their congratulations to Ty Reagan for earning the prestigious award and setting an example of leadership and commitment to Fentress County, proclaimed this 19th day of March, 2018. Uh, next on the agenda, we have the Industrial Development Board, the quarterly report. Uh, Scott Sandman, ID Board Manager. Good evening, everybody. Uh, that's a hard act to follow there. Uh, on the front of the report. There, and that, that's part of the agenda. I knew you couldn't have. <laughs> Uh, uh, I've got a summary of the uh, RFP and RFI activity for the last four months. Uh, you can see we've been pretty busy. There have been a lot of projects coming through from the state and through TVA. Uh, of all these projects, we've been able to submit, I think, for two of them. Uh, what I've done is what's in bold and underlined is sort of what disqualified our community for the projects. They're all looking for specific things. Some are rail service, some's high water usage. Uh, proximity to airports, proximity to certain types of schools. But this gives you a summary of uh, uh, what we've been doing as far as responding to uh, potential investment. On the back of the report uh, is sort of some of the highlights of activities the board's been involved with. Uh, we've gone through a process of updating our bylaws, uh, moving our website and updating it. We've had a change in leadership. Uh, Mike Ledbetter, who's been our chairman, uh, due to some other uh, obligations stepped down and Rob Andrews has uh, was our vice chairman has assumed the roles of uh, chairman for us. Uh, Brian Johnson is still our treasurer. Uh, we've had an update to the Clark Range Regional Business Park uh, master plan. Uh, we completed a, or had the audit of the ID board completed by a CPA and submitted to the state. It's been accepted and approved by the state of Tennessee. It's a comptroller's office. Uh, we've been working with the Upper Cumberland Development District on some grants, but also they're working with us in Morgan, uh, not Morgan, but Cumberland County on some new marketing efforts 
to promote uh, both of our two counties as a good place to do business and that we're ready and have sites available for business. Uh, as you guys know, we received a site development grant last, uh, I guess it was last summer now. We've uh, finalized the plans for that. We've moved forward with the letting of the contract and probably in the next 30 days we'll begin construction on that water line upgrade out in the uh, south part of the county. Uh, we completed uh, or helped the Middle Tennessee Industrial Development Association complete a wage and benefit survey. Uh, this was about a 40 county region where they surveyed uh, wages, benefits, what people are getting paid in different sectors. These types of studies are important uh, for new industries and existing industries to know what their competition is paying. So anyone that participated, any of our manufacturers that participated in this have access to that data. Uh, so that helps their HR department know who they're competing with for employees. Uh, we've just recently completed and submitted a TVA Invest Prep grant. Uh, that's a grant program that TVA offers communities to enhance their industrial sites. We've proposed building a 100,000 square foot pad with 50,000 square feet gravel. That just makes it a little bit easier for a company to come in and go from a, a greenfield site on to having a building. The, this pad will be designed to ultimately be expanded to 200,000 square feet. Uh, and we will know probably in the next four months whether that happens. But uh, that's something that we see as the next step towards moving towards this uh, spec building. Uh, our plan is to ultimately build a 50,000 square foot building and it's, this pad has uh, been designed to accommodate that and will help reduce the cost eventually for the spec building by going ahead and doing this site work and uh, the drainage work. So that's in the works. Uh, we began funding the spec building program. The ID board set aside $25,000 uh, in a reserved account just for that project and we'll continue to add to that as funds are available. Uh, we're working with the Tennessee Economic Partnership, which is a statewide organization that's involved with marketing. The state of Tennessee is a good place to, uh, to do business. Uh, this is our first year working with them. We've got some uh, visits coming up. We're gonna go to Chicago, I believe, on a, a key market visit and talk to site consultants up there about bringing business to Tennessee and to Fentress County. We're also looking at going down to Savannah to uh, uh, manufacturers trade uh, meeting that will be held down there. So I'm working on that. Obviously, 127, there's been a lot of talk about that and some meetings lately. We were involved with that. Uh, just last week, the uh, Assistant Commissioner for Rural Development with ECD, Amy New, uh, was in Cookville on her listening tour, and uh, we attended that meeting, uh, as well as Leanne from the Chamber, I believe she was there. And then upcoming in the next, uh, well, we've got three months starting in April. We're going to be doing some economic development training that we're going to invite all of you guys to, plus the city officials from Allard and Jamestown. Uh, we're going to hold those here in the courthouse over in the economic and community development room, and you can see the dates and times for those. So uh, we've been busy, uh, got a lot going on, and uh, appreciate y'all's continued support. Anybody got any questions? <coughs> Thank you, Scott. Appreciate right. it. Thank y'all. During our earlier work session, um, there was a decision, decision made, I guess, that uh, three of the items on our agenda that we're not going to address tonight, uh, numbers 9, 17, and 18, and I'll uh, entertain a motion to uh, amend the agenda for those items, please. So moved. I have a motion to amend number 9. 17 and 18 of a second second motion and a second anyone wish to speak to the motion roll call vote please jimmy four justin four 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 against four 941 against motion passes uh, next on the agenda number 10 consideration of resolution 2018-04 authorizing the submission of the Tennessee Highway Safety Office grant for the application year of 2018-2019 
Yes, sir. You folks, uh, this grant is the same one we've applied for. So be the sixth year that we've uh, applied for this grant. It's going to be the alcohol enforcement grant once again. Uh, after speaking to the highway safety office, it uh, appears that they're going to offer about the same amount of funding they offered this last year. Uh, this last year, we've received about ten thousand dollars. That's 100% grant, uh, nothing uh, required from the county. So I just need the permission of the council to uh, go forward with applying. I'll entertain a motion to that effect. So moved. I have a motion. Do you have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote. James. Four. Justin. Four. Benny. Four. Donald. Four. Larry. Four. Wade. Four. 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 Two. Four. 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 Motion passes. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, number 11, consideration of a resolution 2018-05, authorizing the submission of the Walmart Community Grant application for the grant year 2018 and authorizing the acceptance of said grant. This grant is uh, one that's offered by the Walmart Corporation. Uh, it's a community-related grant. It's open to law enforcement agencies and uh, <coughs> other public service groups. Uh, it's going to be for, it can be used for training or equipment. And uh, the amount that I'm asking for is going to be $5,000. Uh, like I said, that can be used for either training or equipment that we can use to better our communities. And I uh, just need the commission's approval to go forward with applying for this grant. I'll entertain a motion. So moved. I have a motion. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Benny. Four. 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 Ten four none against. Motion passes. We appreciate y'all's uh, hard work and your dedication, and and in particular the pursuance of the grants. Grant money are kind of lifeblood for our, our county, uh, distressed county. Bringing that in, especially when you get one with no matches, is a great addition. And uh, so we we applaud y'all's uh, uh, determination and uh, uh, professionalism and uh, dedication to the county. Next on the agenda is a consideration of a resolution 2018-06 to oppose the Senate and House Bill SB 706 and HB 1153 to increase the election coordinator's salary. Anyone want to address that? Um, I, I think this bill would, would put an if passed, would put an undue burden on the smaller counties, such as Fentress County. Um, you know, the more populous counties, you know, they certainly probably have a larger workload than we do here. Um, but I, I just, I, I don't see the state mandating us to increase that, that salary for the, the population that we have uh, here in Fentress County. Any further comments? I'll uh, entertain a motion. I'll make that motion. I have a motion to uh, pass the resolution 2018-06. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Roll call vote, please. Four. 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 I will say that uh, over the years, we our uh, contract with Otis Elevator um, has been 
somewhat unsatisfactory either uh, the work and the cost uh, and everything has been um, <clears throat> it could have been much better than it has been so I'll uh, let you all look at that and make a decision if you look at the uh, amounts that were presented United Elevator which is actually coming in at a cheaper rate um, the $1,200 for the test versus $1,380 for Otis and then the full maintenance contract with United is $2,100 versus $2,340 from Otis and based on the past experiences you've had with the, with the Otis Elevator I make a motion we go with United Elevator with the full maintenance um, because that's going to cover all the parts and repairs which in turn looks like it's probably going to save us money. Okay, I have a motion to uh, go with the United. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? And I think that is a five-year contract. Either. That is a five-year contract. Yes, sir. Any other questions or discussion? Roll call vote, please. Jim. Four. Justin. Four. JP. Four. Four. Benny. Four. 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 Motion passes. Uh, next, we have consideration of approval of the agreement for the sheriff's employees that will be attending the academy. And uh, th this agreement basically says that they will, they're agreed for to be employed by Fentress County for a particular period of time. If they don't, they repay a portion or all, all of the money that we pay to send them to the academy. Any other questions or any other clarifications for that? Mike, I want to jump in there and say that be certain that we all understand that we are not um, creating an employment contract with them. We are creating an agreement that we will prepay their uh, training costs at the academy. That it's something they could do on their own if they so choose to do. But we are agreeing to prepay that for them. It's not a wage. We're not uh, setting up any kind of employment contract per se. But what we're telling them is we'll prepay your training. And you can see the portions of it it breaks down between the months if they leave of their own voluntary termination meaning they decide to quit and go to work elsewhere or not work in the field any longer we've not wasted our money in the prepaying of their training I just want to be on the record that very clearly we're not binding them in any other way other than to pay us back for their prepayment of the training right question <clears throat> Move to approve the, approve the agreement. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any other comments? Questions? We'll call vote, please. Four. 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 <laughs> Motion passes. Uh, next is consideration of approval of the Fentress County mowing proposals. And folks, I think you've got two of them there. One from Stardust Lawn Service uh, for $645 per mow and one from Owens Lawn Care for $590 per mow. And those include the uh, Kirby Johnson Field and uh, the South Ventress Community Park and the Clark Range EMS building. I move we go with the lower bid. Motion to accept lower bid, which is Owens Lawn Care. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? Roll call vote, please. I, if, if I'm, I was hesitant, but it, it, nothing against Stardust Lawn oh, Service. No. They, they've done an excellent job, you know, and, and I think they probably did this for three years, but here we can save the county some money, and, and I think we've just got to look at it 
not as um, been dissatisfied with Stardust Lawn Service. You know, that we're not at all. They've done an excellent job. Um, but we've got to look out for the best interest of the taxpayer dollars, and, and here's one instance that we can. And to add to that, because we, I feel like we've created an environment we're not getting as many bids. Uh, last year, I think we had six proposed you know, bids that came in. This year, we have two. So if we set an environment where we're not going to be competitive and we're not going to look at the lower bids, or, you know, we want to consider everything. But I think we've set ourselves up with an environment where it looks like we're not considering that. So we definitely want to consider every aspect. And uh, again, that that's why we want to keep it competitive you know we have to run the county like you would a business I mean, that's what we're here to do any other comments roll call vote please four <coughs> justin four jp four kim four benny four Donald. four lester four jeff four larry four wade four, four. Kim, four nine, eight. Motion carries. Uh, next on the agenda is consideration of the T Tennessee Department of Transportation's offer for the acquisition of the Clark Range Fire Hall and the Clark Range Convenience Center. Uh, as I told you all at work session, I met with Jason Arnold, right away acquisition um, person for uh, TDOT uh, today for, for about an hour. Uh, they had made an offer before and we had discussed it uh, somewhat. Um, for them to everything land uh, the compactor everything at the convenience center and all that out there at the, in the Clark Range area the offer was 183,900 if Fitters County <coughs> opts to <coughs> keep the land which I would suggest that we do that and the um, compactor the compactor uh, <coughs> is estimated value is $76,500 for 10% of that, $7,650, we can retain that and use it further. It's in good shape. Uh, Solid Waste Director uh, Jackie Selby uh, expressed his desire to me that, that, that we do keep that. So the, uh, the formalized agreement that they've offered is $176,250 to reloc relocate both the fire hall and the convenience center. And discussing that with TDOT and TDOT's right away officials, they've informed me that if we appeal this offer, that there's a chance that we could get another ten, fifteen, maybe even seventeen thousand dollars on top of that. It would prolong the process somewhat, but I don't think uh, that we are in any uh, real hurry to uh, jump into something. Uh, especially when we don't know the exact construction date to begin with. So my suggestion is that um, you give me the uh, okay to appeal the decision and ask for uh, the higher amount. Jeff. I, I, I would I'd make a motion to appeal this decision and also negotiate continued use of the existing uh, fire hall and convenience site. Um, uh, until such time we know the the road's going to be built and um, you know maybe up until 90 days prior to construction of the road i'll second it okay i have a motion and a second any other discussion Ms. Frost, yes Any other questions or comments? Roll call vote, please. Four. Justin. Four. 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 Ten four on against. Motion passes. Uh, next is a proposed bill. Uh, SB 1905 and HB 1921 requiring newly elected uh, and, and appointed county commissioners who take office on or after 
uh, September the 1st, 2018, to complete annual training. Uh, there's been some discussion about that uh, from both sides of the aisle with uh, commissioners. Commissioners, what are your wishes? I move to oppose this bill simply because I don't want to see it as a deterrent for other qualified people that would want to run for a commissioner of Fentress County. And that's in the form of a motion. We have a motion to oppose. And I will second that motion on because it wasn't required of us to sit in this chair tonight. So why would we require anyone else in this county to do any other different than what we've done? We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Barring discussion, roll call vote, please. Larry. Four. Wade. Four. 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 Jimmy. Four. Justin. Four. JP. Four. Kim. Against. Lester. Against. Jeff. Four. Eight four two against. Eight four two against. Uh, motion passes. And and I'd like to add to those in opposition of this. I certainly understand. We want the most educated, most informed people serving as as commissioners, but to, to mandate what they must do after getting elected that, that we didn't have to go through, you know, it's... it's, it's and a, I, I agree. That's a flaw in it. Um, I think it should be required of anybody sitting at the table, whether you were elected 20 years ago or elected, you know, this fall. I think, um, again, we had this discussion, the learning curve is high when you sit down at this table. There's so much you ha information you have to get. Um, um, so... We've learned, we've had on the job training, which has been great and good, but you know, I think the fact that you would do some online or maybe in classroom training would be good. And so that's why I, I, I voted against. Um, I think that it's not put together as I would like it. I think it should be all inclusive. You should just train across the board. So, but I'm not against training. And this bill hadn't been passed in no. the house yet. Uh, if it does, we probably have to go anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments? Moving along, we have a couple of budget amendments. We have one for the county clerk, uh, $1,280 for part-time employee for a four-week period. Merlin, you want to say anything about that, or does everybody understand that, ready to vote? Uh, down employee um, in her office for... Um, an undisclosed time um, instead of doing it for maybe a, a whole big lump sum what we done Marilyn is we done it for four weeks when we come back in in, in April if this person is still gone you, you've got enough more money to cover some more weeks what we decided to do is just do from now till the next Commission meeting and then if, if that person's not back look at doing something else and the what she's asking for is twelve hundred and eighty dollars which is in her budget this is not coming from fund balance we're moving some line items and this will cover her through the next meeting in april move to approve okay motion to approve do i have a second second motion and a second any discussion roll call vote jimmy four justin Fort. jp Fort. kim four Benny. Four. Donald. Four. 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 Motion passes, and I think we got one for the sheriff's department. Good afternoon, Sheriff Reagan. How are you all? Good. Uh, for the uh. SROs, but uh, the money for uh, from now to the end of the fiscal year, which would be June the 30th, was uh, 54 932.50. That's to, to send the, uh, to the academy and stuff. Got two, two are going to the academy starting the 9th of uh, April and one going to uh, start April 1st as a, as a deputy. 
uh, I've got enough money except eighteen thousand two fifty three ninety five to have enough money to do all that. Uh, I've done spent this past week. I spent seventy two hundred on uh, tasers, guns, radio, and body cameras for the new ones that's coming to work. So I need to, uh, you know, we're going to put, uh, this is four, six SRO officers. Uh, we've got two in the schools now, and this will be for four more to get uh, before we have one in each school. Uh, I really think that's too much to ask for, you know, to keep the kids of Fentress County safe. So what you're asking for for, for Fentress County government, 18000 253 dollars 95 cents yeah that's correct? the finish out to the fiscal year uh, the total amounts uh, fifty four thousand nine thirty two fifty well but, but before we act i, I want to say that we've been in meetings uh with uh, the sheriff's department board of ed uh york institute um city police uh city of allard city of jamestown uh, I think everybody is on board that there is a commitment from all of us for the, the safety of our kids in the schools. Um, this, I think, is a critical time, and I appreciate the, the hard work, the, the dedication, and everything that everybody has put forth. And uh, Sheriff Reagan, I know that you've done um, a, a great job in, in heading this up and looking at it and, and trying to analyze it and, and put together all the logistics and, and things of that nature so it's uh, it's been a um, been, been a big effort uh, but again it's uh, something I think critically important to, uh, to Fentress County and to the safety of our uh, school children our teachers and administrators I might add too if you know if y'all pass it to come Monday whenever they go back to school I'm gonna have every, I'm gonna have offer in each school. I may be a little shorthand on the road, but I mean, we're going to try to work it out for you, kind of take care of it. But uh, there will be an uh, officer in each school. I move to approve. I have a motion to approve. Do I have a second? Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion? I, I would, if you wouldn't mind. Um, I, as you said, we, we've met several times with every agency. In order for this to happen now, We've got commitments from the Board of Education, like Mike said, and, and, and some other agencies that wants to help. But for this to happen now, we have to do this now. It's, it's our responsibility to, to help out where we can, and I think this is a step in the right direction. Um, I think by the time August gets here, we're going to have some funding in place that's uh, not going to cost the county, but maybe one full-time salary. And uh, I, I think this is the right move to make. Any other comments? I got a question for the sheriff. And I don't mean to put you on the spot. Put him on the spot, Benny. Okay, <laughs> I'll put you on the spot. Um, my question is, if there is a problem, a threat to a school, will the SRO officer intercept and try his best to stop the threat? Absolutely. That's all I need to know. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? Yes, Jeff. Uh, we've, we've got verbal commitments of, of municipalities and school boards and so on that say, yeah, yeah, you know, we'll pitch in and help. But we don't know how much that is. No, we don't, and and they've they've told us from day one that they needed to see the numbers, and then they've got to go back and have their meetings and, and discuss it. Um, well, since we have the numbers tonight, and we haven't been able to give them the numbers yet, uh, and we're, is it possible that we can recess here tonight and and um, present those numbers and and. and and let them say yes we're going to fund this many dollars uh, so we're not surprised and and you know have to fund well 90 percent of the I'll, bill. I'll respond to what larry said i think um from now until school starts they will have ample time to see that we've made that commitment we've got the officers in there 
Sheriff's Department has trained officers in the schools. They'll give them some time. We take care of it right now for the $18,000. I'll agree with you, Jeff, that we probably need something in writing to, you know, to back up what they say they're going to do. But however, these other agencies are not going to meet before Monday night. So their respective city council, board of education, committee members can't vote between now and Monday night to come to, to back to us by Monday night. So we're at a we, we're at an advantage that we get to be here tonight, but they don't meet again until next month. So and, and school starts back next Monday. So you know I, I think that you know we've had numerous meetings that's recorded that people went on record. You know I, I think that would look bad, and I don't think they want to look bad. Um, but you know we're meeting tonight, and we'll meet again hopefully next Monday night. But these other agencies can't meet before then. So. Any other questions or comments? Uh, for our attorney, uh, the SRO officers
I have one more thing. Then go ahead. Okay. <laughs> you have your one more thing. Okay. I have one more thing. I um, just wanted to announce it's not really commission related. I volunteer, do a lot of volunteer work for the Pinter's Hope Foundation. I don't know if y'all know that. I'm not going to go into that much. But anyways, we have been able to secure a RAM clinic for Fentress County in September of this year. Um, it's remote area medical. They will come in. They're going to be here on September 8th and 9th. They bring in doctors, dentists, um, eye doctors. I went and visited the clinic they had in Coolville this past weekend. It is overwhelming. I, I mean, several times I was in tears to see what they were doing. Um, they don't ask questions about your income. You know, if you don't even want to show them an ID, you don't have to. It's an opportunity for people here in this county that have not had dental care. Um, they, have, they were telling they had had a gentleman they had pulled every tooth in his head. They were that bad. You know, for years he had not been able to afford to go to a dentist. Um, they were making eyeglasses that day. They were going to have 300 pair of eyeglasses that went out. And again, this is free. This is for the people here in this community. So um, just overwhelmed that we were able. It generally takes several years to even get them to come here, but with a lot of prayer, we were able to, like I said, to get them here in September. It's just overwhelming. So this is my presentation to people in the county. We need volunteers. We will need volunteers. We'll need churches to feed these people and some different things. But. But again, I just wanted everybody to be aware of it. We talk about there's so much here going on in the county and, you know, worried about nickels and dimes and everything. But um, I thought this was just a phenomenal thing that's going to come into the county without any cost. Thank you, Kim. You're welcome. Anything else bring before this commission? <laughs> I want to say something on the, the Pinterest Hope Foundation. Uh, we had a statement that the reason why you wasn't getting no bids, no bidders on it, is because I own a mowing business. I've been in business now for five years. It costs us a lot of money to run them machines. And uh, you've got these young guys that's coming up, that's coming out of school, and they're, they're going, they're, all they're doing is going down there and bid and putting a bid in on these jobs that comes, comes open in the newspaper. They're not going out there walking these places or looking at anything. I know for a fact because I've stood right over there at the office and talked to several of them. I used to put in on the county bids. That's why I know them. the reason why there's no bids has been put in is because all this undercutting, you know, I can't do it for that. That's why I didn't put in for it this time. And these younger guys, Andrew Starr has done a great job the last several years that he's done it, but I even noticed last year that, that he kind of got behind too because one of his mowers messed up. Do you ever... Go back and look at these fellers' history and see how long they've been a mowing or, or see any of the work that they've done. I don't know the guy that got him, and I'm, I'm not down at him. He may be a, one of the greatest lawnmower guys that ever was. I'm not saying that. But it's going to cost the county double what he put a bid in on if that grass gets about that high and for anybody going there with another mower to start mowing. Anybody knows that with common sense because I'm not going to put my mower in knee high grass for no $250. And I, and I do my own maintenance. I don't know if these younger guys knows how to work on these things or not. But there's a lot of things need to be took in, in perspective with this stuff whenever whenever these bids are put out. I think they ought to be they ought to be checked. And they ought to, some some of the commissioners need to go out and look and see at some of these guys, see what kind of work they've done. And then, then go that way about the bid. I, I agree with taking taking the lowest bid because I I'd want to save the county all the money I can, or could. And you guys have done, a, have done an awesome job at your, at your job. But I'm telling you, it's going to cost you twice that much if you've got to have a guy go in there and clean that mess up when you've got one of these younger guys comes in that don't know what he's doing. And then when he figures out, hey, I've been too long on this, I can't make no money at it, and he pulls up and he leaves. Because I've seen it happen a lot of times. I know. I've cleaned several places up for three times what they've spent together this morning. So that's what I'm saying. They need to, somebody needs to be going out and doing a background check on these guys that's putting these bids in and getting the pay scale back up where it needs to be on the moment. And then you get a lot more people put in on these bids tomorrow. You know what? I wish I could mow it for nothing. I know there was a statement made several years ago, well, I'm going to save the county some money 
and I'm going to do this and turn around. He cost the county about three times what he was what he was going to save him. So, but I, that's just what I want to say. I wasn't going to say anything, but I'm a moment man, and I know father, but nobody else is putting bids in on it because you can't compete with these young guys. And at 99.9% .9 of the time, he's not going to finish the job. You're going to have to get somebody to take his place anyway because it's happened time and time again in, in the past. Anybody knows it's had anything to do with the county. Not a whole lot rather go through and see one about that high is come go through and see it about waist tight where you can't even walk in. But that's what's going to happen if we're not careful because <coughs> you're going to get to the point where nobody's going to put bids in on anything because nobody's checking the scene and make sure what's going on. Thank you, Lee. You're anything else bring before this commission? <coughs> yes, ma'am. Be brief. Thank you. <clears throat> My name is Emma Legg, and I am here for the fourth time standing up for justice, truth, and the law because of this board's 2016 refusal to uphold our laws, this board and Executive Cross condoned illegal acts made by two dishonest men who blatantly violated our laws for their own selfish greed. <coughs> Since this board did not believe my 2016 reports nor neighbors' photographs that reveal water forced to drain on top of ro our road surface, due to Butch Blevins' illegal blockages. Therefore, this board must hire a civil engineer to study our three natural waterways. The responsibility and care of our roads is our road supervisor's duty, and this includes keeping water off county road surfaces and to remove obstructions according to Tennessee law. But not even a 2016 petition of all our homeowners was enough to get obstructions removed. And this proves Scott Norris intends for them to remain because if removed, our only ditch will overflow onto my lawn in the second natural waterway. <clears throat> but since this water is from the first waterway, Norris's obstructions are illegal and also equal diversion that amounts to the taking of my land, which violates our Fifth Amendment. Thus, Norris abused the powers of the Office of County Road Supervisor. This board needs to know these three obstructions were made after Norris took office to cover up our inadequate drainage, and if Norris had not sanctioned them, why and how could our neighbor have made them? In 2005, Blevins built his illegal tar and chip levee purposely to cover up our developer's illegal diversion of water from the first waterway through the second waterway. But Blevins wasted taxpayers' money and violated our laws and civil rights. Thereby, Blevins abused the powers of the Office of County Road Supervisor. The amount of tar and chip Blevins wasted was more than enough to have tarred and chipped our entire cul-de-sac more than two times. Therefore, Blevins betrayed the public trust. For Blevins to have wasted all that tar and chip for his levy and not ever tar and chip our cul-de-sac is unfair and unequal under our 14th Amendment because Skyline Drive homeowners must be treated equal as any other homeowner in Fentress County would be. Blevins' illegal acts are detriments which result in loss of value to Skyline Drive homeowners because Tennessee real estate laws require disclosure of all detriments to buyers. This puts Skyline Drive homeowners at an unfair disadvantage compared to all other homeowners in Fentress County. And this violates our 14th Amendment also. Our voters elected this board to represent our citizens, but not to condone lawlessness, nor to connive behind closed doors with Executive Cross, who used the powers of his office to influence your decision with his untrue statements at 2016 meetings, which showed Cross does not have the best interest at heart for our citizens by ignoring our laws and civil rights, which is abuse of powers of the Office of County Executive. And a few of Cross's untrue statements are 
that the college that trains road supervisors told Cross Ventress County has no responsibility regarding Skyline Drive's drainage. That our county attorney's opinion was that Ventress County has no duty to correct Skyline Drive drainage. That Ventress County does not have money to do anything for <coughs> Skyline Drive. <coughs> Did this board really believe Cross's statements? And if you did, you must believe all elected officials can violate our laws as they so please. Does this board not know you have powers to see that officials do not betray the public trust? And you must exercise these powers to fulfill your duties. But if you do not, you are betraying the public trust and you become co-conspirators and are derelict in your duty. Due to this board's condoning illegal acts, offers my, neighbor and my neighbors and I intended to make to pay for two culverts were not made in 2016. But if this board fulfills your duties, we will make our offers thereafter. I have been told our third previous road supervisor had his hand in the pocket of our developer. Hence the reason we have zero culverts and only one ditch. Our previous road supervisor had his hand in our developer's pocket, hence Chairman, the reason like why we have reasons. seven illegal levy alterations. Ma'am, And even our developer garbage. had his hand in the pocket of landowners to the north, hence the reason we have developed the de developer's diversion of water from the first waterway through the second waterway for the sole purpose of giving greater value to the richest property on Model Farm Road. Ma'am, as entertaining as your just, just act of fiction is, I'm going to accept the motion to recess until next Monday night. Recess. For more than a century, Union Bank has been serving the people of Fentress County. Now, as we begin a new chapter in our history of service, we want to take this opportunity to reassure you that while our building may be new, we're still the same friendly people you have known for years. Union Bank, the same people, the same goals, and the same commitment to you. Union Bank, your locally owned hometown bank for more than a century, growing to meet your needs. Equal Housing Lender Member FDIC.